Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Water Drops. Today we're going to be talking about profile plotting methods for hydraulic grade line and energy grade line reporting in info drainage. Now, if you've ever submitted a stormwater report, you've most likely had to submit some variation of this diagram here. And really what we're looking at here is just a diagram of a drainage network in profile view showing the manholes, the pipes, invert elevations, and of course the focus of today's talk, hydraulic grade line elevations. You might also be required to submit something like this with energy grade line elevations, and you might also need to submit something like this with multiple recurrence intervals. This is a rather common request and is an integral part of any drainage designer's workflows. Uh, I am based in the Denver metro area. This is the stormwater manual for the city of Aurora, Colorado. And again, you can see here in the requirements just that we need to plot those hydraulic grid lines for all two year and or 100 year storm sewers and channels. So this should be a familiar part of any drainage designer's workflows. And of course, with info drainage being a hydraulic modeling package for drainage designers, we needed to incorporate different ways to easily create those HGL and EGL profiles. A lot of times that can be either a manual process where you're typing in those values and plotting them by hand in something like Civil 3D, or you're having to do sort of a manual superimposition of taking a picture of those HDLs from a software package and kind of impose, superimposing it onto a pipe profile that you might have created in Civil 3D. So we'll look at three different ways that Info Drainage can handle plotting those HDLs and EGLs in a way that allows you to eliminate risk of human error and just save some time. So this workflow is for hydraulic modelers looking for an easier way to submit those hydraulic results could also be for civil designers looking to speed up plan creation and submittals, and for CAD managers looking to maintain data integrity between modeling and drafting teams. So the workflow that will follow, again, we're gonna look at three different methods for plotting these HGLs and EGLs. So first we'll demonstrate some native tools within InfoDrainage that you can plot directly from within the software. Look at uh, some options to batch plot multiple profiles and add, and add annotations. We'll then look at another method to export those profiles to a 2D line work version of those profiles. So something that you could be able to open in AutoCAD. And lastly, we'll look at the newest method, which is sending that HGL and EGL information to Civil 3D from Info Drainage so that you can create those profiles and benefit from all of Civil 3D's inherent drafting tools. So let's take a look at the first method of plotting HGL and EGL information on pipe profiles, and that is the native tools that exist within Info Drainage. So this is an example model. I have kind of some wonky catchment areas in here, but I've already run an analysis, and we're gonna focus on this flow path here. So if I open up this flow path and, collect, and select show profile. So here I have the 25 year results. If I zoom in on this pipe here, for example, I can see the HGL in this dark blue line. I can see the EGL in this red line. And these values are reported also on the manhole annotations. So I can actually see what the HGL and EGL is at each of those junction nodes. And so really the quickest way to export these results is just exporting to an image. So if I click on this file or this icon here, you can see I've already saved this. Uh, basically it's kind of similar to a screenshot. It's just gonna create a .bmp file. So you have that and you can include it in reports or any sort of internal deadlines or just communicate these with internal stakeholders. And if I open up this, uh, file, you can see that this comes in here. Again, just an image version of this with those EGL and HGL profiles annotated. If you need to toggle between events, the option to do that is just down here. So I can also toggle to that 100 year event and export this information as well. 
You can also change the display settings. So if you need to wanted to change the color of the HGL or the EGL or hide or display certain information, if I just right click on this profile and then go to display settings so I can go in and customize these different parameters. Another native info drainage tool for exporting these profiles is the plot current flow path tool. Here we get a more sheet layout type of view of this profile. I can see those HGLs and EGLs on here and there's a bunch of different options over here in the plot settings for changing this. Uh, you can change this vertical scale. If I press this button here, it automatically kind of assigns the best scale just to fit this data. Again, this is something that is probably going to be used internally or for a quick export. Typically, stormwater control jurisdictions or agencies are going to want to see these being annotated. And those annotations that were on that profile view don't show up in this plot profile Another reason why somebody might want to use this tool in particular over just exporting to an image is the fact that you can batch plot multiple flow paths. So over here on the left hand side, you can see that I have a bunch of different flow paths. And so I can select all of these ones that I want to print at one time. If I update the preview here, I can see that this document's now five pages long and I can quickly switch through these different profiles. I did have one client whose jurisdiction wanted to see each individual length of pipe on its own profile. And so of course they had many, many flow paths. And so being able to just export these directly from info drainage and export them all in one step was a major benefit. The second main way to get HGL and EGL information on a pipe profile is to export to a DWG. This also exists within these different flow paths. So if I go here to show profile and we look at that profile again, but this option is just this icon right here, export to CAD. There are CAD options here, so you can change the view of some of these items. For example, changing different colors of the line work or just turning certain items on and off. The one thing that I do suggest changing in here, of course you can do a lot of this format in AutoCAD or in Civil 3D, but I do think it's beneficial to change the horizontal and vertical scale before exporting just because that can get a little trickier. So here I've, the default's one to one, I've changed the horizontal scale here to four. So now I'm going to export this to CAD, give this profile a name, and then I'm gonna open it in Civil 3D. So here is that profile four that we just created. So let's zoom in. Here you can see our pipe profile with those annotations and all of the hydraulic information. So zooming in here, there's my HGL, there's my EGL. This is below the pipe, so something wonky is kind of going on here. Uh, but basically that profile, as well as with the cover information and basically everything that we had selected in those CAD options has made it over here. And so it's important to note that these are not Civil 3D smart objects. This is just a 2D line work representation of information. Actually, these come in as 3D polylines. But again, this is just line work. So you can see even these grid lines are just 3D polylines. Uh, each of these different elements is on its own layer. So you can see those info drainage layers that came in. So again, these aren't as intelligent as Civil 3D smart objects, but it's a good way to just quickly get a CAD version of those profiles with all your HGL and EGL information. So now let's discuss the third and final way of creating profiles with HGL and EGL information on them, and that is to directly import from Info Drainage. Now in previous versions of InfoDrainage, the way to display HGL and EGL information on a pipe profile was to export to a 2D line work version like we're showing here, and then superimposing that HGL and EGL information onto your Civil 3D pipe network. As of InfoDrainage 2024.2, the HGL and EGL results from your InfoDrainage model 
are now carried over in the pipe properties so that they are available for automatically adding into your civil 3d pipe profiles so let's take a look at the original file that my info drainage file that we were showing earlier originated from so this should look familiar this is the original civil 3d pipe network that we sent to info drainage that i was showing earlier this is the length of pipe that we were creating our profiles from and so now what the interoperability between Civil 3D and InfoDrainage allows us to do is when we import from InfoDrainage, so we import that drawing that we've already been looking at, we can send over the results. So zooming into this profile down here, I can see the HGL and EGL information. So I've already sent over the 25 year storm and now I'm going to import a different storm event just to demonstrate what it looks like. So we'll go to import from Info Drainage select the info drainage file that we've been working with so far and if you're familiar with info drainage or if you've watched any of our other water drops or seen any of our drainage downloads this civil 3d and info drainage integration piece is something that we talk about a lot so this is what's going to look different than previous videos demonstrating this tool this option to load results. If for some reason this area is blank for you, I would check to see if you have the correct version of InfoDrainage downloaded. This is only available in InfoDrainage 2024.4 and onwards. And I'd also check to make sure that you have ran and saved your InfoDrainage model file. I was having that issue earlier and it was just because I didn't save my InfoDrainage file and so this area did not show up. And so what we're looking at here, this is the phase within info drainage that we're importing. This is the civil 3D pipe network that we're going to update. We have an, the option to create a new surface or use the existing civil 3D surface. And then we can choose to load or not to load the results. So here is the rainfall data that was used. And then here are the three different events that I ran in that analysis. So this is something important to note at this point, you can only import one rainfall event at a time. I'm going to import this kind of extreme weather event here just so that we can highlight some of those changes in the pipe network. And so this should look familiar. This is just the parts mapping process. Here we can see we have our civil 3D parts families and the corresponding info drainage objects. Just make sure the junction mappings are populated. We are missing a few, so I'm just going to load a parts mapping file to automatically populate that information. And now I'll press finish. I am getting some import warnings, basically saying that I do have some pipes that don't fit inside the manhole. Just gonna ignore these for now. And you should notice here my uh, my uh, profile down here at the bottom did regenerate, but as you can see, those HGL and HDL information has been changed, so it's no longer contained in the pipe because I brought in a recurrence interval that was very high, and I'm really trying to flood the system here for the sake of this demonstration. Uh, you can see the changes, and you can see that this HGL and EGL information has been updated and is demonstrating that 500-year event. And so if I go into one of these pipe properties and I look at the extended data, I can see the storm that's associated with these hydraulic model results. So this also automatically gets populated in that import from info drainage process. If I also look at the pipe properties, I can see that HGL, those hydraulic properties have been also populated from the info drainage model. And so once I have that HGL and EGL information associated with my pipe network, I can, of course, add labels and annotate this pipe network in whatever way I see fit. Here I have a label pointing to that length of pipe showing my HGL and my EGL. I can, of course, format these profiles in the way that I typically would any other Civil 3D drawing, change my styles up to make this look a little better. 
But really, the main point is that the HGL and EGL results from your info drainage drawing are now associated with your pipe network and they are associated with your pipe network automatically in the import from info drainage process. You no longer have to manually type in that information in the pipe properties. You no longer have to superimpose HGL and EGLs from the 2D line work version of the info drainage export to DWG. And so by eliminating those two aspects of your workflow, you're eliminating the risk of human error, you're reducing any sort of manual rework, and you're also just saving time and headache by having that information transfer over automatically. So we covered a lot today. We looked at three different ways that you can use info drainage to create profile plots of your pipe network with HGL and EGL annotations. We first looked at the tools that already exist within info drainage, such as the plot profiles tool and the option to export to an image. We then looked at the option to export your pipe profiles in InfoDrainage to a 2D linework version of that profile with those HGL and EGL annotations. And last but certainly not least, we looked at the new feature in InfoDrainage 2024.4 that allows you to send HGL and EGL information over to Civil 3D as properties of your Civil 3D pipe network. And so now hopefully you have a better understanding of all your different options for profile plotting with info drainage. All three of these profile plotting options are definitely better than doing anything manually and more specific to the last workflow that we showed with the civil 3D and info drainage results exchange. We demonstrated how you can easily and seamlessly get your hydraulic model results into your civil 3D plans and eliminate the risk of human error. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on water drops.